Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, January twenty first, twenty twenty four. Still haven't fit, uh, haven't uh, screwed that up. I've said twenty twenty four every time. Nice. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast with Determined Lake, episode number uh, 726. And Damon, why are you down there and who's that next to you? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Normally you're up here. Yeah, but, but I'm here. For some reason you're down there and there's well, somebody else with you. So the reason I'm here is that we are doing a episode of Let's Talk About Kink. And this episode in particular, we're interviewing the recent Cincinnati leather title holders, which include myself and my twinner, a good <laughs> beauty. <laughs> uh, we're not going to move. Yeah. Um, my good friend. Um, Trayla, Trayla Parks. Hello, hi, nerd. Yay! Oh, Welcome sakes, to the got, show. We got sash queens among us, Gary. Like we haven't had them before. I mean, to be—I mean, that's fair. It's just been had, years since we've had. Right, right, right. Them. Well, I mean, we, you know, we we fumigated, and that kind of took care of things for a little bit. But no, they're back. Really. <laughs> And there now, again. now we've got one permanently on the show, at least for the next year. Well, kind of like after that, because technically they were beside the point. Right. We just it's can't get rid of them now. I know. I know. Can't get rid of me like you wanted to. Well, with that being said, let's talk about twinning, shall we? Hey. So, as was referenced, Last year in August, history was made at the Cincinnati Leather Contest when not one, but two winners were announced. I so do we are love, excited. I do love the music in that dungeon. But I, I actually ran that like like two or three. Oh, you're talking about the fact that there's two titles. Two title holders, yes. Sorry, there's a dungeon in Final Fantasy fourteen called the Twenty. Ah. Oh. You had to get you had to get the geek speak in. You just had to. Oh. Just, just the game. Yeah, got just it, got it. <laughs> so yes, we are excited to have you, Trayla, join us for an extra special first of its kind podcast um, interview episode. We are breaking new ground here. I think this is the first time in a guest, in a host home, we've had the guest live and in person. Um, we are using a different uh, slight mic setup. So for those of you that are regular listeners and watchers, you may be wondering why Damon and Trayla sound a little bit different. It's because we're using some newer equipment that we uh, got for the special purpose. And on top of it, I just found out before we even went live, I think in pre-show, the wildness of this is that this is your first interview and in your new titles. Yeah. yeah. Officially, yeah. Officially, the first official interview. Pfizer well, interview. And I didn't realize I was going to pop any cherries tonight, but here we are. So let's see. <laughs> wow. she's like, what did I sign up for? Welcome to the wild. Oh, no, I'm here for it. <laughs> this one doesn't know me yet. No, no, no. <laughs> nice. 
So yeah, and uh, for those of you that are get, getting to watch us either live or later on YouTube, we have some photos um, from uh, the two of them. One of them is the lovely uh, professionally shot photo of the two of them side by side. Uh, but more importantly, I had to go through a series of photos to yeah. capture the moment you found out that both of you won and there are some, there's like a great kind of like time lapse sequence yeah. of like the master of ceremonies discussing this and your reactions. Um, and I believe this is the airborne moment. Both of you are not touching the ground any further yeah. because that both was, of you jumped up and down. It was one of my favorite shots of the whole night. Yeah. Honestly. It was, it was oh gosh. Um, I was, I don't, again, it's unprecedented. It really, really is. You don't have something like that happen. Mm -hmm. um, as I think I've talked about before on the show, um, as, as a tally master, as someone who is, who's done the calculations and done the tabulations and figured out winners and stuff, there's usually a way to break a tie mm -hmm. in some sense of the word, like figuring out like, who had the most points, blah, 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 this, that, and the other. Um, them saying they're, they're, that it was a tie was so, like, it was shocking and surprising, but also surprisingly, like, it was something, it was something we manifested. Like, it, it really was though. Like we had spent the like we were just in the dressing room, maybe what twenty minutes before that, right? And we we hung out together the whole weekend. Like we did not separate. We didn't like go off and do tickets by ourselves or anything. Like we hung out the whole weekend. Mm -hmm. We were just vibing the entire time. And then we get to the dressing room. We're like coming up to about twenty minutes before announcements, and we look at each other and we're like, "Can we just both win?" Because like I don't I don't want to yeah. do this without you. You don't want to do this without me. Can we just can we just both win? Like let's just let's just do that. Yeah. And like, of course, we're just fucking around. But then we get down there and they say, you know, that we we tie and then they take it a step further. And they're like, so we recounted and then you tie it again. Yeah. So we, we fucking lost it. Yeah, we fucking lost it. It was great. Yeah. So I, I checked and it looks like, uh, Damon, you have to do something about your 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 jumping. Although I think you might have just hopped because I think you were only two inches while trail is like a good half a foot <laughs> off the ground. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that picture, I think, so if I'm remembering Listen. that moment correctly, I think we, we weren't, so while we twin a mm -hmm. lot and we kind of always get each other vibes, that was a, I think we were both kind of like seesawing. Yeah, like, yeah. Like I have jumps, a video of it somewhere. I'll send it to you later. <laughs> I, I have the video on, but I do have video. But yeah, it's, it's nice. again, it was. When 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 that's announced, when mm -hmm. so, when it said the way it was said, and the way it happened, it 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 doesn't hit. It hit. It hit. As you saw, you see mm -hmm. on our faces. There's a picture actually. One of the pictures before this, where we're both like, what? Like the shock face, the wow right. face, the like open mouth face, mm -hmm. and that was sort of the. It washed over because it was. That can happen. That can happen. A tie happens sometimes. Well, that's that's what I want to ask you about this journey of like what it was like to learn about the twinning, quote unquote. Like, so you're told by the MC that there's a tie, which the impression I'm getting from both of you now is you're not surprised by this, that that you came in like steady into the race and came out like pretty much at the same level and then you might, I guess, mentally prepare yourself and be like, okay, so then what's the next thing they're going to say? Because presumably somebody must have like gotten ahead or like, you know, tie break something. Well, it's, it's never happened before. Like not in Cincinnati anyway. With ties are a thing, you know, outside of Cincinnati, they've happened, but there's always some sort of protocol in there. Or like, you know, they'll look at how clean the bottom of your boot is or something to determine the tiebreaker. Like there's always, yes, wow. that's a thing. And yeah, there's there's something in most most of their rules and regulations to, to break that. 
Cincinnati's never had that issue before, so there's never been anything put in there for it. Right. So, like, we had joked around about it, said that we wanted it to happen, but when it actually happened, I, I, was, I was blown away. Yeah. I was so blown away and so excited because, like, the thing is, I'm, I'm newer to the scene. Damon okay. is well-seasoned. Like, he's been here a hot minute. Thank so- you for saying well-seasoned but not old. <laughs> I really do appreciate that. Yeah, she, you're the wait for the record. You threw the word. You put the O word out there, David. Just so know. you know, you said it. I never young at heart. So, young at heart. so <laughs> he's just like a cast iron skillet. Yeah, absolutely. You, you don't wash it. You just <laughs> wipe it out. <off. laughs> I was gonna say, oh, like a cast iron skillet, slicked up, slipped up in bacon grease. And well seasoned, but oh, but no, the um, the um, I was a nice one in this whole joking picking. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just said you were well seasoned. I'm not yeah. nice. I'm awful. Yeah. <laughs> so this true. Was, this was um. So when like when we're do, when you do a competition, we are competing. You you expect there to be you expect there to be a winner. Like that's sort of the goal. Like you always expect that. So despite the fact that we got along so well, Mm -hmm. that we vibed so well throughout the competition, that was a wonderful, you know, breath fresh air, but I don't think that was unexpected either. Like, I think we all, Mm -hmm. we both kind of, we knew each other. Yeah. Yeah. We knew each other from different realms because we've both been in the community a while. Mm -hmm. And that meant like, and, and on top of that, the contest itself was very happy with us being the the, the contestants at the time. They were both very um, complimentary. They they were like, we really like what you guys are presenting. We really like who you are. So taking that into account, going into Saturday, it was kind of like, yeah, we're going to do this, and we're going to both do we do our best and do what we can Mm -hmm. and made a best person win was kind of the idea that we both had. Yes. We were talking about like literally like 20 minutes before it happened. Like, why don't we both just win? Why don't we both just get the title and just Mm -hmm. let it be the thing and whatever happens happens. And sort of like, we were really literally manifesting it as Mm -hmm. we were discussing it because we both felt like we both gave it our best shot. We both did everything I think we could have done. Mm-hmm. It's usually up to the judges, but listen, we, we each got an opportunity to listen to each other because there's only two of us. Yeah. So sitting backstage, I get to hear trailers, like any presentation they do, or when we were on stage together for the Sash game, mm-hmm. like oh my God, that's so that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> but like there, there were moments in the contest where we got to, hear each other and listen to what the other person was saying. Mm -hmm. And that part made it feel very genuine that it doesn't matter who of us won. This was going to be taking Mm -hmm. this title into a very Mm -hmm. fun, unique and interesting direction. When we both won, it was sort of like, okay, cool. Now we can both do what we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Both can now do what we were talking about. We can both do what we wanted mm-hmm. to say. And in a lot of ways, it has helped. I, I feel like it has really helped the community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. No, I agree. So I'm intrigued in something. Uh, Trailer, this is going to focus on you for a moment because right. no, no offense. We know Damon's whole goddamn life history. Uh, <laughs> be, being a co-host of this show for a very long time, we've heard so many stories. And a know thing the back- or two, I'm sure, yeah. The background. But I'm, I'm intrigued to like give you a little bit of a moment to tell us about yourself. Like You kind of mentioned, I think, that this is newer for you in comparison to someone as uh, well-experienced as Damon yeah. is. Um, so tell us a little this bit about... like your. fan over here. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about like what your um, experience has been, your leather journey, and how you came to to. Compete. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my name is Trayla Parks. So I have been in I've been in the leather scene, um, kind of faded into the background for probably five or six years. Um, I started going to leather events uh, when I moved to Cincinnati about six years ago, 
Um, I am actually a drag queen. So that's where most of my leather journey started. I actually hosted the first, the first world bear that I ever went to. I was the drag queen host for it. And that was the first time that I'd ever been to a world bear. Wow. And I forgot about it until we went to World Bear last year. And I was like, oh, this is my first World Bear. And then Jamie's like, no, no, it's not. You literally hosted it like six <laughs> years ago. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, you know, like I kind of, I was one of those people on the outskirts that like, without divulging too much into it, there are, um, I was letting certain people tell me what I shouldn't, I should and shouldn't do with my life at that point in time. So I didn't get too enthralled. Um, and on top of that, it was very intimidating. Um, I was a person at that point in time who had not, I had not explored a lot of kink. I had not um, learned about a lot of kink and there were not a lot of places to openly learn about it either. Um, that it was kind of like, I felt like I didn't belong in there. I shouldn't be doing it because I didn't know anything about it and I didn't know who to approach. So over the past couple of years, I've changed that. I started, you know, I got a lot mouthier and a lot louder and <laughs> just, I started approaching people with my questions and I started reaching out and branching out. I've got, um, you know, I, I live with a couple of the boys, you know, from the leather community and that's been very educational um, to say the least. <laughs> you know, when I decided to run for Cincinnati leather, I, I almost didn't do it because I was like, again, most of these people barely know who I am and I don't know everything there is to know about kink. So how am I supposed to run for this title? And I'm like, um, that's not how this works at all. Like my, my entire basis this year is for, and that's one of the reasons that I was so excited that we won together because of how seasoned Damon is, Frank Pan. Uh, <laughs> your nickname's Frank Pan. I'm gonna oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> my cast on skillet. Anyway, uh, <laughs> ADHD, where are we at? <laughs> you were talking about why you were doing Oh yeah, that. so what, the entire basis of running for me this year was specifically for people like I was six years ago who have no fucking clue what they're doing, don't feel like they belong anywhere because they don't know anybody, they don't have, they don't have the education. And like, I, I am hoping that over, this, over the course of this year, we can run some classes and some events to draw people who feel like they don't belong there. Because the entire idea for me is to, to educate you and then send you home to go do what you wanna do, go have fun safely. Like we're doing at the end of the year, um, we're planning on doing a kink flea market where we're literally going to have 20 to 30 booths up. Um, we're working with Raya and a couple other people um, to have education booths. So there's going to be 20 or 30 different kinks. You know, you've got your you know dominant submissive kink, you've got electro play, you've got the latex, like, and then there will be vendors in the other room so that you can go in here and educate yourself about each of these individual kinks, find something that you like, go into the other room and buy something related to that kink and go home with it. And it's just the, the entire idea for me is, is to educate because there are so many people within the circles that I've been in that just don't feel like they can be here because they don't know enough. And that's, right. not, that's not the case at all. Because if I can do this without you know, yeah. having much education to start with, I'm a lot better off now, but it took me a minute to get here. And if I can do it, so can you. Oh, listen to that. And this explains. Also, they've pronouns. If I didn't say that already, that's okay. <laughs> we, uh, I'm, I'm super impressed. Like that in and of itself, and that that moment of you just speaking is such like a representation and an explanation of like the the title, like because I Did think, you? um, people have an expectation that you know a person is going to be well spoken which you are but you were also very genuine and honest like you opened your heart up and said like listen i come from a background of not knowing a whole lot i also felt that i couldn't be up there quote unquote like on the stage doing that thing because that's not a something that i felt you know i had not put my maybe my time in or yeah. you know had studied all of the things yeah. within the realm um and it is an interesting thing, like kind of in a yin yang uh, kind of concept in terms of like both of you having the title, because uh, I think Damon has a really good opportunity if he's responsible <clears throat> to, you know, mentor <laughs> you in, in ways. <laughs> like the, the, that was that was something I think when we were doing this that Taylor mentioned specifically that mm -hmm. they were very wanting to know they wanted oh, to get the yeah. experience they wanted to get the education mm -hmm. because they were so green and so new mm -hmm. to all of this and 
on that same token, though, I feel like you have grown so much. Thank you. Just in sure. the few months that we've been in this title. I'm working and, on it, that's for sure. And that's the thing. Like, I'm, I'm seeing that. Thank you. And that's been really amazing to see. Um, granted, yes. Have you always been outspoken? Yeah, of course. I Me? Mean, yeah. What you, do you even mean? You. You. It's okay. Uh, no one believed that. You <laughs> know it. Um, but um, I got the mouth and the balls. You got the education. There we go. So <laughs> the idea being that um, when they approached me about the idea of doing the flea market, it's something I would I literally was I was thinking about like something mm-hmm. along those lines. I've been very big on education because similar to what Trailer was talking about, people not knowing. My main concern is when you don't know something, you have the potential to do Yeah, exactly. And that's where knowledge is, is power, mm-hmm. and knowledge can help you not fall victim to a horrible situation or allow you to, as they said, practice keep safely and be educated to do things that you feel comfortable doing. Um, yeah. Because like, when you're too ashamed to ask the questions or you don't know who to go to the app to ask the questions, you, you Google it or you do it yourself and then you end up getting hurt. Yeah. You know, so having that yeah. point person for people to go to. One of the stories that, um, I don't think I've told you this. One. This is a story because it's, it's, it's been so many years. Years ago, um, Jim and I were at a bar in Indiana. Um, and we were talking with a person, um, this guy, who advised that they had, because they were so interested in um, chastity kinks and also electroplay, by the way, don't, those are really weird things to combine, but they did. Their idea was that they were going to um, put themselves no, it wasn't a it wasn't a chastity. It was a they were tied, like bound. And they put themselves in an ice lock. Which if you know ice locks, they only open once the water has melted. <sighs> I heard that. I heard that. See? Yeah. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We have a we have a we have another guest here. I'll It's just the dog, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. You're a good boy. <laughs> You are an award-winning dog. Um, <laughs> Shetland pony. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, with that being said, they were in ice lock, and they had um, um, the little pads, the tins pads they're called. Anyway, they oh, had the little, units? yeah, they had yeah. little pads on on their lower parts, and the idea was that they would allow the um, they would allow themselves to be played because they could not get out of it. But they did this alone, which is a big no-no. And they ended up burning themselves because they could not get out of it and they could not take it off. They couldn't turn it down. They couldn't do anything to stop it. But they ended up burning themselves. And that is why, I mean, even before that, but realistically, that is one of the reasons why I've been very big on things. And to me, doing there are certain things that you should never do alone but you may not know that if you don't have the knowledge to know that so um education and safety have been very key for me and safety not just in play but safety in environments and spaces that you are in Um, because my tenants when i was running was making cincinnati leather and connection spaces safe spaces Mm-hmm. And making sure that people know that they will be welcome to come and that people who should not or cannot, you know, follow consent or basic human decency mm-hmm. can should not be in those spaces. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny, David, when you're describing that story and my instantly when you're talking about the ice lock. And then, like, the electro play, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, water and electric do not mix. Like, I, like <laughs> that's, like, that's, that's, like, Mr. Science way back in the day, like, kind of, like. Bill Nye, come on. Yeah. 
I was yeah. like, oh dear. Yeah. It was it was not a it 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 was he I mean he got better, but it mm-hmm. it it kept him um he informed us then that at that time that it was one of the reasons why he shied away from doing a lot of stuff. Because he, you know, he hurt himself badly um and was now too afraid to do much else. So it, it stopped him immediately from doing from growing potentially and maybe finding a safer way to do mm-hmm. it or doing it with someone. And I think kind of where we feel balanced in this situation is that we both kind of feel that way. Like mm-hmm. if you have that information, you can go off and do your things, but you should know what you can do safely all alone mm-hmm. and maybe with a, a partner or a dom or what have you. And the good thing about that is like, we have such a great team already and not just in Cincinnati, like the people that we've been working with Mm -hmm. to build like the filth fetish ball and to build this, um, this uh, kink flea market, like we're already filling out, you know, 20 different slots, but like there's going to be an educator at each booth. Like we are, we have, our family has spread out so big and it's, it's beautiful because they all have the same goals. Like they're all writing up pamphlets and stuff to have, you know, the do's and don'ts and, you know, things that you should do, things you shouldn't do, what your safety procedures are, um, how to get out of a situation. Like, and it's, it's nice to know that the goals that we have are basically spit and fucking image, mm-hmm. but then we've got such a large support system that's ready to help us achieve those goals because yeah. they have the same goal. The thing, the main thing, one of the like requirements, which I've contest requirement kind of things is being ambassadors Mm -hmm. um um, and that to me has been key in not just making cincinnati being an ambassador to like cincinnati but welcoming anyone that wants to come here Mm -hmm. to come here and also reaching out to Mm -hmm. other events coordinators Mm -hmm. educators to bring them here because that helps build that community Mm -hmm. and builds a much longer and larger and stronger community well seasoned if you will (laughs) you're gonna do that every time yes i am okay okay you're welcome (laughs) (laughs) thank you thank you so much yeah so i i'm curious about something and i don't know how relevant this will be based on something you said earlier but Do you think there are ideas for consideration based on your experience other future contests could do when it comes to two winners for the same title? And I guess I'll, I'll add it or I'll add on a little footnote based on what you were saying. It seems like a lot of them may already have like what to do in the event of a tiebreaker, but because there wasn't such a thing, so to speak, what do you think about that conceptually that, that doesn't have to happen given your experience. I feel like you, you are coming from a perspective of it, it can be done as in two people can both be the title holders. So honestly, if I'm pretty sure that they've already put something in place for the next year, Um, I think they've already added something into the bylaws for the contest that if this happens again, they're like, please don't. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, but honestly, I think it's more efficient. Like I, I think like in this situation, this was a unique situation. So to give a little bit of history, um, Cincinnati letter has, this is one of the few times that there's been only two contestants. Yeah, There's normally four or more. There's usually three, sometimes four. There's been as many as I think, Gosh, I think with oh, seven. Let me share. there were seven or eight. Yeah. yeah. So there have always been like multiple contestants. So mm-hmm. usually when you have a like a larger range of people, it's easy for a judge to scatter the points, as it were. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so that does sort of make it where ties don't normally happen. So in this situation, it worked out because there were just two of us, you know. It does sound like, in my mind, back in August when we were competing, mm-hmm. win or loser, I, I don't like to think of it that way, but that mm-hmm. was the way you have to think of it because there's not a, like, second, third, fourth mm-hmm. place. There's a 
you first win or place you win. Yeah. or you don't. Like, that's mm-hmm. sort of the way it is. And I would say if a contest, I think if you can consider it, if you want to consider a dual title win, um, think about the repercussions of that, first of all. Meaning, how does that look? From our perspective, it looks fine. Like the thing that Jim and other people kind of mentioned, they were in the audience, was when it was announced that we tied and when it was announced that we were both being bashed, Mm -hmm. it wasn't a, there wasn't a negative. There wasn't a boo, there wasn't a hiss, there wasn't a, Mm oh, so-and-so should have won or so-and-so should have won. It was very Mm -hmm. much a over-the-top, applause and congratulations mm-hmm. and like yes this is what should happen because that feels right and i'm probably gonna get in trouble for this comment but i'm gonna say it anyway um you know that's also because we're not like egotistical people like to be honest we work well together because we know that we can play off of each other's strengths mm-hmm. but i think another flip point of that is if you get two people up there which we all know a few of them with an ego the size of this house and you sash two people at once it, it may not go as beautifully. Yeah. So it just depends right. on who you have up there. If, there's gonna, if you're going to have two winners, if you're going to have a twinning situation, the two winners are going to have to get along. Mm-hmm. They're going to have to get along. Mm-hmm. And that's not always going to be a thing that's going to happen in a contest, depending mm-hmm. on how things are going. Now, don't be wrong. Like, Gary, you and I watch Drag Race. We see, We watch it a lot. So we kind of know a little bit about, like, I mean, this is just as dramatic. Sometimes I mean, it's fair, just leather fair, instead of a G-string. So. <laughs> Sometimes both. I mean. True. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> but no, the, the, um, the, I, the idea being like, if two queens hated each other and one was in, and they were both kind of at the end, if they, if you crown both of them, it would not be pretty. It would not be fun. And, and the community is the one that loses out. And when yeah, that and that's yeah. the biggest part. Like it, it's not a this situation worked because it was unique. We really genuinely liked and cared for mm-hmm. and vibed so well. Um, vibed so well be, before the contest and then during the contest that this outcome made sense Mm -hmm. this outcome worked because i would and i mean i don't want to put words in your mouth but i think had it gone one or the other i don't think i we would have lost the other ones oh god no Uh -uh. that's kind of how i feel about Mm -hmm. it so have been a barn don't play so what you're saying is this is not a too long food situation no Mm -hmm. no 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 it's more like kung fu panda (laughs) <laughs> i'm afraid to ask which one of you is jack black so we'll move on that's me <laughs> i was gonna say that i mean you're right i, I mean but, what you say makes sense i hadn't considered the personalities of the contestants even as a dynamic but that is fair to say you know they would need to get along and they would kind of be forced into a unique situation to, to do that. So that's completely fair when it comes to that. I mean, in those situations, you just throw them into a beat up a, a convertible and send them over to, from New York to Los Angeles. <laughs> See, I like Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. That would be, mm-hmm. I mean, that would be a fun, Oh God, no. That's on a road trip. Can you imagine Oh, have, be, can we do that? Actually, I mean, actually, we probably should. I'm so I have some ideas. I have a thought because it's some. Anyway, yeah, sorry. let's do that. Anyway, sorry. look, sorry. I'll After. lose all my princess points immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring me along. So I'm intrigued, though, for this imaginary like road trip. Are we gonna like blend together, Priscilla and Tu Wong Fu? Is there a bus? Is there you know? Are we are we gonna go you know with a convertible practical route? We have a whole family. We, we do. All, we've we got we've got it. trucks. We've got SUVs. Mm-hmm. We can just run a U-Haul. That too. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is it's actually a convoy 
There you it, go. You should have seen us one at the World Bear last year. It absolutely went the convoy. We'll do it again. We had a U-Haul hooked up to the back of the SUV. <laughs> yeah. So, actually, that's probably something we can, we should talk about because one of the things we've had this year as well, and one of them back here, mm-hmm. um, we've had, we had, we have a, we have a, a title family. Mm-hmm. Um, so, the house of house of <laughs> um, the, so in May, May, May. March, March, sorry. In March last year, um, there were the Cincinnati Critter and the Cincinnati Handler um, titles that were done. And those two, um, Puck Balti was Critter and Luna Bones was Handler. Um, so we've all been doing things together. So, And that's been kind of amazing because mm-hmm. not only do the two of us buy, but the four of us buy. And we've also added High Fish as well, Pat. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So High, mm-hmm. yeah. So High Fish, um, who um, recently won World Pet, mm-hmm. was the previous Cincinnati Critter and the first Cincinnati Critter um, title holder, and they are now part of it too. So mm-hmm. we're all kind of in this together, which is another thing that I think is a really amazing part about having a twinner and having a community is that you have a while most title holders will have like their sash dad or sash parent mm-hmm. and have um, maybe their contest producers and whatnot to back them up and be their support. Mm-hmm. This title, we've had, we have so much support. There's not a so single much, moment of this yeah. year that I felt unsupported. Yeah. That one. Which is kind of amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, funny, I was just thinking the. Um, there's a there's a, a song I simply cannot do it alone. It's from um, Chicago, and I was just listening to it before William <laughs> him arrived, and it made sense. I don't know, and it's weird to try to think. Could I have done this on my own? And I don't think I could have. Honestly, it would have fucking sucked. Yeah. Yeah. I think I feel like having this. Um, uh, having this twin and then having two other title holders and then another title holder all here and having, again, having a very wonderful husband. So the other part, so you don't realize, um, I got married in June Yay. and then did the contest in August. Um, so I the had first this... thing every single podcast. Yes. Yeah. I, was, I was separating my relationship at that time. Right. <laughs> so like we had these we had this amazing support and having that is key. That is very key. Everything that keeps it. I just broke a nail. Oh. Um, um but that I think has been very crucial in making this experience be as wonderful and positive mm-hmm. as it has been is because we have this wonderful support. Um, and Trayla, like you live with a few of your supports. And I, I live do, with mine. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's been kind of the best part. Like we all mm-hmm. kind of, we're all there for each other. We're always mm-hmm. usually, and they're, they are, what, five minutes away? Yeah, the five, minutes five away. to eight. Yeah, yeah, nothing crazy right down so, the street. Yeah, yeah, it depends on who's driving. If I'm driving four. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, not right now. It's but like, road. yeah, but yeah, the the idea of like, literally, your support is right at the road. Yeah, that kind of is an amazing thing to be like mm-hmm. and to feel and have and to experience. Do this contest and do this event and do this title mm-hmm. with all of that support has been the most amazing thing. I know that if I really like, really needed, would like have like, I really need to sit here and vent and bitch or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, I've got someone that will be like, I got you. We can and, literally call each other at any point in time. And that's, that happened during the contest. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, not to give up the, like, like, step aside speech, but one of the most amazing things that happened during our run, during our run, before we even, like, won the title, was every time I came off stage, you were there. 
and you were saying things like you've got this even before getting on stage you're like you got this we're going to do this you got this you were the my biggest like um i was gonna say push her up that's, <laughs> <Push her upper. laughs> that's not what i'm looking for <laughs> motivator you're my biggest motivator and, so are and you. that made it even more fun and more wonderful when we decided mm-hmm. when when this happened so yeah we were hyping each other the whole time whole time Damon, for a moment, I thought you were on the edge of saying that Trela is your athletic supporter, but <laughs> I that's mean, probably a different can, scene. We do go to the gym three mornings a week if you want to join the train. <laughs> you ready to lift? <laughs> and if I do need to start exercising, more. you want to come? <laughs> oh, Tomorrow's leg day. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, that anyway. being said. Um, <laughs> I think, I think it's good to know that you guys bonded through the mm-hmm. process of like competing for the title, and that's part of what makes this like twin title holding so special for the Cincinnati community is that you are together in this and doing things and like really being there for each other in multiple ways. And as you were saying, that you have this like broader family. You know that's there as a, as a support system. So very nice. Just so you that you're aware, we did have a couple of chats um, that came in, uh, and I'm these are beautiful new people we haven't had before, but you may know who they are. James Haworth. He's in the living room. That's our dog. Okay. Okay. Well, that he <laughs> that can is catch the current, you. Current was... uh, Cincinnati critter. Nice. Yes. Um, was making comments about loving the the twinners and that they're going to keep track of your calendar. So apparently you have an assistant who's going to be at the ready. Yeah, to... he is literally one of our biggest supporters in the world. Yeah. Like, <laughs> nice. my life would not exist without that man. <laughs> yeah. And of course, as you made reference to uh, Vince, they had said, couldn't be prouder of these two beautiful leather folks. So Love you, Daddy Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> So that being said, I'm curious about something. I mean, uh, you talked a little bit about like this event that you're planning. In what ways have you planned the future um, of this title year? It sounds like you're really looking at it from a perspective about education um, and giving yeah, so people that, opportunities to learn. Yeah, that our both of our primary goal has been education for most of this. So the like what we what normally happens with leather, and this is not a derogatory statement at all, but it's just there. There's maybe one big event throughout the year and then there's a few small ones sprinkled in and then they have like bar nights at 901 and that's really that's really as far as the expanse has gone for you know for a couple years at least which i know we had covid and everything but like i really wanted to branch out and do at least two really large events we are still doing the bar nights at 901 and stuff but the big reach for me this year and that we've talked about together is to try and get into new venues Mm-hmm. and having the two large events that are going to be in new venues to attract different crowds. Yeah. Because like the first event filth that we're doing, we're doing it at the mock again, because it is, that's the only place that we can do an event like that. It's a little too um, X rated for any of the other venues. So, and it's. Well, there's a fuck yeah, floor. Honey. Yeah. Okay. Never there's mind. a fuck floor. Never mind. All right. Anyway. <laughs> that being said. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> but you know with the other event we're we're doing it um you know pin in this because it's it's not set date yet but we're hoping to do it at alice which is a brand new venue for leather we've never been in there before and when i reached out to them they were so excited about it and it's reaching an entirely new demographic like there are you know most of those people that that attend that bar are like 30 and under which is not the age group that you know we already have in cincinnati leather the seasoned the, members the, of the <laughs> community these, these these are very unseasoned <laughs> there is these are fresh out of the out of the like box um, fresh out fresh out the box we gotta rinse them off pat them dry get some yeah. seasoning on there yeah. you know but it's just reaching an entirely new demographic getting into venues that we haven't been in, be- in mm-hmm. before and just making sure that we're expanding and growing as an organization yeah. because if we don't educate expand and grow the organization does not expand or grow which means eventually the organization is just going to fizzle out like yeah. we we have to keep doing it. yeah and that's i think that's been one of the greater goals of having mm-hmm. like these events doing things because sometimes as 
well, trailer was a perfect example of that. I was too afraid to go into and do things because I didn't know if I would be able to fit in. Instead of having events at the same spaces at the same times, always doing that, bringing it to people mm-hmm. means that if they want to be a part of it, they'll be there. Mm-hmm. If they want to see it, if they're interested, it's, it's one less step as opposed to them having to come to you. Mm-hmm. You going to them, being in their space, and letting them explore, experience, um, educate, mm-hmm. so that if they find something or are curious about something, they can do so safely mm-hmm. and without taking too much, stepping too far out of a comfort zone, without going, like moving forward on their own, at their own pace. So yeah, the 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 events have been, I've been, for honestly, how that because these were the like this one will be like I'm going to do this and we'll take off with it and all that you literally asked was like hey I'm going to do this do I have your support and they would they explained it and I was like absolutely this sounds like a really great idea and it sound the 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 filth idea, it sounds amazing because it's not that it hasn't been done before, mm-hmm. but it is something that was lost. I'll use the word lost. Yeah, we'll use the word lost. That's um, the word for it. For um, sure. Was lost. And we're reigniting it mm-hmm. and doing it in a different unique yeah. way. We're reclaiming it and yes. making it bigger than it ever has been. Exactly. And I'm so excited. Yeah. And then the expo, I, I, I love the idea of this. Because going someplace and being able to experience different things, again, in an environment where that's able to happen without having to commit to a lot of money or commit mm-hmm. to go, like, doing all of the things, like going and being able to talk to people who are experienced and educated Mm -hmm. and learning more about the different things sounds amazing because it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Um, Letter organization groups sometimes will want and try to do education, but they can only do it on certain days with certain people, Mm -hmm. and you're only limited to what's available at that day. Mm -hmm. Getting a whole bunch of people to come in and do things and are you going to be able to like fully embrace like a big like scene? No, but that's not the point. The idea is to get a taste or to get a get a little bit of knowledge mm-hmm. and get some interest to see if it ga- to see if it gauges your interest. And beyond that, you're building connections within. So like it. If I come up to an educator at a booth and I'm talking to them about this kink, I've now made a connection with this person. These right. educators that have come in are going to be open to people reaching out to them and, you know, asking additional questions, asking for help. And, like, you can find people with – because I, I'm hoping that bar is going to be packed out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's going to be plenty of leather people in there for you to approach and ask questions. So it's not like randomly walking up to a leather person at a bar to ask a question, which right. can be really intimidating mm-hmm. that, you know, at this education event, which is, it's a free education event, by the way, we're not charging people to get into it. And um, the, the proceeds raised from filth are intended to fund mm. um, so that we can like pay our educators. And Got it. But yeah, there'll be people, people mm-hmm. that you can build connections with and yeah. continue your education so that it's not just a tidbit and then go home. And for me, um, one of the things I've been trying to do, I've, I've done a lot of the traveling. Mm-hmm. I've been doing you a have, lot of yeah. the traveling. Um, I went to Chicago. I've gone to mm-hmm. Virginia. Um, I am planning to go back to Chicago for IML. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm doing, we're doing, are you doing NAB? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So oh, yeah. we're both doing NAB, which mm-hmm. will be fun. Um, and we're doing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're also doing um, World Bear again. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And World Bear will actually fall, it falls in August. It's the first weekend in August. So it'll be probably one of the last events we do we be. step aside as title holders. Yeah, it will be. Probably. July is going to be, forget, and mm-hmm. then August will be our last mm-hmm. event. Yeah, so it has, the, it has the potential to be our last event, our last big event, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, and for those knowing, I, I have, I'm, I'm going to IML but I'm, I, I don't plan to compete. 
um, because I've never been. Mm-hmm. Despite being this seasoned title holder, <laughs> this seasoned um, um, leather person, I have yet to attend IML um, mm-hmm. in any capacity. So going as a title holder, not having experienced it at all, seems like a lot. Mm -hmm. So my personal plan right now is to go and experience it um, and then maybe later, because I think I have an opportunity depending on what happens with the title this coming August, Mm -hmm. um, I may have an opportunity to potentially compete another time maybe i don't maybe. think i'm competing for anything else you don't for the competing? next 12 months like 12 consecutive <laughs> months I can, this is what the third the third organization mm. in three years I, I need a yeah. nap yeah i need a nap and then yeah Trayla, and then maybe we'll think about another one that's been the one thing i think knowing Trayla has been like i have the chorus and i have um this um uh, mostly Trailer was a part of the Cincinnati court as well. You are, are, were, sister? Did yes. they have a one <laughs> they've, been, they've been involved, and they've been yeah. involved in the community. And that was one of the things, mm-hmm. that's how we kind of got to know each other, was seeing them doing all of these organizations and being a part of the mm-hmm. community. And then, on top of that, then during drag, um, there's a performance. They performed at um, Kings Island Pride. That performance yeah. was. You're gonna make me blush. That was so good. It was so good. Um, but so they, they, you know, so but they're doing. You're doing. You're doing so much. Fine. I and, think I was just trying to figure out where I fit in, to be honest, because like I was always there was always a certain discomfort in any of those other roles, and like I am so comfy right here. Like I, I feel like I fit in so much better. And the leather organization that I have in any other organization that I've been part of, to be honest. Like, I've never felt more myself than I do right now. Which I think is a really wonderful thing. It's fucking it's fantastic, wonderful thing. Honestly. When you're When you're truly comfortable, that's the best part. Mm-hmm. And I think that really speaks to, like, for folks to know that, like, you can be involved in different aspects of community and eventually find your tribe your alignment with that yeah. you you won't be the last individual who has done the art of drag and found themselves being like oh actually i find myself in this whether it be kink or leather or um you know some other arena um when it comes to that and you know as damon and, and jeff are aware i've tap my toes into different things over the years and recently have come into a new role um, with something. And I'm just like, okay, this is Love that this for is, you. Well, it's, uh, it will discuss it in another episode. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> let's, let's just say um, it kind of happened rapidly and I'm like, okay, I guess that's another thing I'm putting on my resume, <laughs> my CV, <laughs> like we'll see how else. that goes. Yeah. Um, but you know, the, the reality is I've prepped for this through the other experiences. So mm-hmm. by being involved in an executive board of a nonprofit being, you know, the person who coordinated the events, the person that was the president, like those things give you like your building blocks that lead to the other stuff. And it sounds very much trailer. Like you've had that experience, you know, court court is serious. Like court is you know representation court is fundraising court is like putting a face out there in a way that like brings attention to the community and does good things for the community um and i don't think that people understand imperial court very well in these days i mean uh jeff damon and i are kind of of the same age group so we've heard of it sort of known of it over the time but i think younger generations may not know that as much um so that's that's something to to be aware of that that gives you a certain like understanding about perspective and presentation and how you do things for the community. So yeah, I think that it's good to hear that you're like, you know what, maybe I, maybe I don't like <laughs> move into, <laughs> move into another thing. I'm good where I am because I feel like this is, this I is think the spot. I, I, I've been feeling kind of a similar way. Um, I did 
this title to do work here in Cincinnati. I did not do this with the intention to move on and move on to the next. I wanted to do work here because um, I felt work that there was work that needed to be done. Mm -hmm. right. And so even though that sounds like it's, it's, it's great to like have the title and then do the work and then like after that's done, like, okay, you can then move on to whatever you want. I don't necessarily know if I wanted to do that yet, but I agree. I think I'm going to be probably the same. I think I'm going to give this a try, give, IML is like kind of the bigger thing. See all of that, because that I think will be, that's kind of the next step mm -hmm. in this track. Um, if, if, if it's leather, mm -hmm. I can always go another route. Mm -hmm. like, I always can. Um, but that was not the goal. The goal was this, right. the goal was this. Mm -hmm. And now I've got that cool goal achieved. On I can move on to the next one or I can keep working here and finishing the next little side quest here for the gamers out there and succeed and continue to grow here. And okay. yeah, you both are at the beginning of, of, of a point like this event that you were talking about earlier in developing. I see that as becoming a new main thing um, yeah. that really may you know, continue on year after year, and then you end up becoming, you know, the coordinators, so to speak, that are, you know, the building blocks of that, that can continue that on just because your title, your quote unquote, um, you know, transitions to other title holders doesn't mean that you still wouldn't be involved or making that possible. For I have to throw in a little plug here, though. This I actually stole this idea from Raya Sunshine um, from the Titans. She's actually helping me <laughs> get this event up and going. But this is all her. I just jacked it and expounded it a little bit. <laughs> That's fine. Hey, I think I think that some of the best stuff that's happened in human evolution is a reiteration or a variation oh, yeah. uh, of whatever that thing may be. Yeah. And Rhea was actually one of our judges. I love her so much. Yeah, she was a, a amazing person. Yeah, like, she's I cannot, brilliant. I cannot, I, I uh, the the judging panel. I think we had. I mean, mm -hmm. Vince was one of them, but mm -hmm. the judging panel, which is why I feel this was such a, just again going back to the contest and everything. We had a very interesting and wonderful group of judges mm -hmm. that I I, I want to be I wanted I wanted, I'm so happy I got to be friends with all of them and got to get mm -hmm. to know them and, and yeah, they were all through lovely. this through this um, title um, we now can work alongside them because mm -hmm. there are things that they are doing in their own communities mm -hmm. that are I want to be a part of I want to help yeah. them I want to do things Thank I want to yeah. keep building these bridges because. Um, that's what I feel the ambassador side of this was to be, mm -hmm. was like, let's keep building these bridges and making things happen so that we can keep connecting people and engaging and keeping this community mm -hmm. thriving. Yeah. Cincinnati yes. Lover does not have to stay in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Nice. So with that being said, as I feel we're, um, coming towards our, our conclusion, what are the things that you want folks to know about um, the future of Cincinnati Leather and, and what you are working on? Hmm. So I would say the one thing that I want people to know more than anything um, is, A, I look like a bitch. I look intimidating, but I'm not. Please come ask me questions. Uh, <laughs> but more than anything else, like, you do belong here. I don't care what excuse you're giving yourself. I don't care what it is that you're saying to yourself in the mirror. And I don't, it doesn't matter how much education you have. I don't care how long you've been interested in kink. I don't care if you've been having vanilla missionary sex your entire life. I don't care. Like it, it does not matter where you are at in life. You belong somewhere here. And if you don't know where you belong, come see me. We will find where you belong. Like we, we will fit you somewhere. Like you don't, you don't have to do this journey by yourself and you don't have to stay on the outside looking in just because you think you don't know everything. Absolutely. And kind of on a similar vein, um, you are welcome here. Mm -hmm. So no matter, again, no matter where you came from, no matter who you are, if you are respectful regarding consent and keeping people, you know, accountable, then you are welcome to come here mm -hmm. and you will find a space here that is welcoming to you. 
um, beyond that, um, we are a very fun city and we have a lot to offer in regards to our community. Don't let any preconceived notions keep you away from something that can be a rewarding, positive experience. I think that's fair, you know, and, and if you've ever heard that Cincinnati's referred to as Porkopolis, sure, it's full of pigs, but you know, those may be the kind of folks that you want to get to know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sure. You're right. There, there's plenty of pigs. <laughs> and if you are one of those, Boink. and sense a requirement or you'll find a boot in your ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trailer, trailer, trailer. See? No. I'm so shy. What do you mean? You're so innocent. Uh huh. So with that being said, um, as we're getting ready to, to wrap up, is there um, any particular location or uh, website, social media for the title, um, not necessarily you each respectively individually, we'll get to that in a moment, but like in terms of Cincinnati leather that folks should check out, like to see yeah, what's there happening. Is a, there's a Facebook, there is Cincinnati leather.com and there is an Instagram. All of them are just under Cincinnati leather. Okay. Uh, there are links to those on our profiles as well. And that's where I'm presuming they'll be able to see these events that you folks were oh, talking yeah, about. They want to go. Yes. Right, we're sorry, looking. Yes. We're looking at the Sunshine Letter like website. <laughs> we just we just kind of jumped to it, I believe. Yeah. Um. Anyway, but anyway. Yeah, anyway. But yeah, SunshineLeather.com <laughs> is a like, the like if you want to find out anything that's going on, you'll like, see these mugs. Yeah, you'll see us. And then the Facebook page um, group will also be where you can find events that are happening. Where there are events usually every month, um, twice a month, typically, mm -hmm. um, and additional events as we, um, you know, mm -hmm. as schedule we them as, as we, we schedule it. them. Mm -hmm. um, along with that, like Cincinnati Critter obviously has their things going on too, mm -hmm. and that's kind of cool. nice. So with that, Jeff, I think we're gonna uh, wrap and then go into post show. Yeah, um, there's plenty of ways to contact us. Uh, if you would like to uh, send your uh, beautiful graces to Trela, we can definitely afford those to you. And <clears throat> it, although you'll probably get direct contact information in a second. But for us, you can pop over to our blog at comesoutloud.com and leave a comment there. Shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 Talk. That's 361-265-8255. Follow us on Facebook. The platform that once was called Twitter is now called X, but everybody still calls Twitter and still uses Twitter.com, even though they also use X.com. And Facebook at Cubs Out Loud, the appropriate place of the URL. You can join our entourage chat on Telegram at bit.ly slash telegram dash co bell you can find out when we're planning to record these shows at bit.ly slash calendar dash co bell you need various accoutrements such as a consent is my foreplay shirt in leather style and various other styles uh, regular comes out on shirt sweatshirt with the logo Whatever over on our Zazzle store, zazzle.com slash comes out loud. Some of those designs, such as the consent is my foreplay design, was designed by Smashy. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron to us at patreon.com slash comes out loud. Thank you to all of our patrons. And you can also send us a donation directly at paypal, paypal.me slash comes out loud. You can find us on the various Podcasting platforms such as our podcast, Google Play, Spotify. Please raise, review us there. The more you rate us and review us, the more in the algorithm, up in the algorithm we get up, the more people find us. You can find me anywhere in the internet. It's box that box, puppy box, cup box, something or other, but usually it's me reposting something from somebody else. Damon. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at theatercub 79 That's T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most of the related sites are on Facebook. You can also find me as pup underscore umber on Twitter. That Twitter is definitely not safe for work. You can find me as 
Hub number 79 on Blue Sky, which is also not safe for work. If you want the safe for work stuff, you can go to DMA Gamer 79 on Twitter, R, now, and now TikTok. Nice. Well, Gary, okay. Gary first. Okay, go ahead. That's all right. So if you want to find me online, you can pretty much find me anywhere. It's Gabriel73 uh, on the various platforms. Trela, if people want to find you and you want to be found, where would that be? Um, it, it, it's hard not to find me. My shit's pretty public. Um, so you can go Trela Parks on Facebook. I don't get on Twitter anymore, but Trela Parks, if you want to follow that. Um, Instagram is Trela underscore Parks. Um, what was the other one? This guy. Blue Sky is under, I hope that's under the business name. Business name has not been launched yet, but keep your eyes peeled because that's going to be coming soon. <laughs> so Instagram and Facebook are my two mains right now. So Trela underscore parks. I will post a social media sheet later. Nice. And with that, take it on, everybody. Bye. Bye. Have a good one, y'all. Bye.